I will tell you this, uh, we mentioned earlier the sitcom you saw amazing uh, Catherine. Give it up for Catherine Cairns, who uh, appeared as Mrs. Mullinger in the sitcom. Uh, the fictional Mrs. Mullinger. Um, and uh, it was an amazing experience. It was a weird thing trying to pitch a sitcom about my life here to Toronto Bell executives, because they came to us. They, didn't really, they were like, look, we've heard you guys uh, know comedy stuff there. We've had success with Jonathan Torrens in Nova Scotia and Mary Walsh in Newfoundland. You know, do you have an idea for a New Brunswick sitcom? We're like, yeah, yeah, we do actually. We've got an idea. It's about a British comedian, leaves London, England, moves to a small town in New Brunswick, falls in love with it. And they went, nah, bullshit. No one's going to believe that. <laughs> No, 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 it happened, it happened, it happened. So then it got commissioned, it was wonderful, and everything was all going to plan, and we wrote the scripts, and um, a few, and it was directed by, uh, and co-created by Mayor Adam Lorden. I told you, lots of mayors in this, right? That's three, four mayors you've had in this show now. Um, and he said, calls me up about three weeks before we're due to film, and he goes, James, We've cast all the parts. We've got all the parts. We've got Nikki Payne, Derek Sigan, we've got you know, Ethan Ash is doing the music, Catherine's in it. Uh, he said, but I've got a bit of a delicate subject and speak, speak to your wife about it. But he said, that how would you feel about your children playing your children in the show? I said, ah, oh, well, I said, the problem with that is um, my children are a fucking nightmare. <laughs> And he went, yeah, I know, I've been to your house. Yeah, I've been to your house. Yeah, I know. He goes, that, he goes A, that's what we want. He goes, B, uh, you know who's more of a nightmare than your kids? The parents of actor children. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I see what you want. You want someone that's going to be there and let them work 20 hour days without food and water. Got it, yeah? No. Um, and then so they gave us the thing and they said, okay, well, um, so, so we, we agreed that, yeah, this would be a fun thing to do. It'd be nice for me and the kids to be away. I'm always missing them when I'm on the road normally and I get to be away with them. It's going to be lovely. So I'm there. And um, it's amazing how quickly a, um, a, a TV set can, can, can turn people into monsters, right? <laughs> like, it was funny, like, uh, River turned nine during the whole, during the filming. And it's a big day, a, a nine, so a big birthday for a mother and a kid at that age. And Pam um, phoned River and he was on set. He wasn't filming a scene, he was just on set, just sitting there eating a granola bar. And, uh, and I can see she's calling, it's the morning of his birthday. So I'm like, oh, there, there's the phone. Rush it over, River, River, there's mum. And, and, and uh, he answers the phone and she goes, hi, River, happy birthday. And he goes, I can't speak, mum, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Same day, that afternoon, right, Hunter is, uh, he's on set, he's filming a scene with his, his TV mum, Catherine, right, and they, they, you know, he does his lines to her, and then we flip the cameras around to get the back of his head, and, uh, and we're about to, we're getting set up, getting the lights ready, she's about to do her lines, and Hunter goes, uh, is my face in this? And, and we go, no, 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 back of your head's in it. He was like, well, can't someone else stand here? on your first job, mate. <laughs> Meryl Streep doesn't get a stand-in. So there we are. There we are. And, it's, uh, and it, it, it was just an amazing experience. But of course, they were being paid actra rates. Like, it's not, not a lot, but it's, it's uh, acting day rates, right? I, it's not a lot, but it's more than what you can obviously get trust a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old with, right? Because they're just going to blow it all on V-Bucks and Robux and Prime drinks, right? <laughs> So you, you, you can't give them that money. So we made a decision um, as a family. We said, look, we can't give them all the money. They're just going to blow it. Let's tell them they're making like 10 bucks a day. G give them the 10 They'll be happy with that. They'll end up with like 150 bucks. They can spend it on the Robux and the V-Bucks. And then we'll take the money. We'll put it in the college fund, right? Put it in the college fund. Save it. It's the right thing to do. And then November rolled around and we went, eh, maybe it should go in the Christmas fund. <laughs> Greatest Christmas of my life. <laughs> Every other Christmas, walking down the stairs, just you know, you're feeling, feeling bitter and twisted, aren't you? You, be, you sit there and the kids are like, Daddy, Daddy, look what Santa got me. And you're thinking, I fucking pay for that. <laughs> that bearded red bastard gets all the credit. I've been traipsing around the country performing in dive bars, vineyards, basements just to pay for that and someone else gets the credit and then suddenly, this past Christmas, greatest Christmas of my life, I come down the stairs, I felt at peace ladies and gents, no bitterness, no anger, the kids come running in, dad 
Daddy, Daddy, look what Santa got me. And I'm thinking, yeah, you fucking paid for that, mate. <laughs> If you ever have an opportunity to steal from your kids, grab it with both hands. <laughs> oh.